Norman James uh, Slama, spell S-L-A-M-A, and was born in Aurora, Illinois, on September 3rd, 1929. This is my dad and me, and uh, we were at the Chicago World's Fair at the time, at that time, for this, this photograph. And, um... Uh, I didn't realize what a good-looking guy he was. <laughs> he was just my dad. What year was that? Probably 1933 or 4. Probably 33. And I, that's the only particular thing I, I remember about the World's Fair. But I was there for sure, anyway. Okay. Well, he was a tailor. Made men's clothing. Yeah, I think he worked for Hart Schaffner and Marx and some other large companies like that, too, for a time. But anyway, I still remember the World's Fair at any rate. Okay. It was a lot of fun. Okay, well, my dad was born in Czechoslovakia, and when he was about two years old, he moved to Chicago. It's quite a big leap from the old world to Chicago. And uh, you would never know it. He spoke perfect American language. So he was a great guy. He was a very easygoing dad. So I was about six years old, I guess, in this picture. This was in uh, Wisconsin. Some friends of ours owned a farm in Wisconsin, just outside of Chicago, practically. Almost, you know, mm -hmm. close together. And uh, my aunt Libby drove over there, and I wish I had a picture of her and my mother. Um, this is it. So anyway, the, and the, these are old people that owned the farm were old friends of my my mother and my uh, aunt. And uh, that's about all I remember about that thing. It was a lot of fun. This is me as an air aviation structural mechanic. I got the three airmen, and uh, well, it doesn't matter. I was a, when it went to went to uh, basic training or whatever boot camp at Great Lakes, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's my stripes there. That was 2021. Now, I've been in a while here. I've got three stripes. Okay. Uh, let's see, 21. Okay. It's okay. This is my dad on the right, and this is my mother, and this is my actually my half sister. We were we were half. My dad was previously married, and he had uh, a daughter. Uh, and here I was a naval aviation cadet. So this put this, I, I have to figure out the year, but I was a cadet for a year. And I can't pin down the time frame. That's okay. That's close enough for government work, you know. Yeah. And that was at uh, one, of, one of the family weddings. Somebody got married. My, one of my cousins. And that's, so that's a nice picture of the four of us. My bachelor's degree from the University of Illinois in, in science. Okay, I thought it was geology, but it was science. Bachelor of Science. And uh, I felt pretty good because I started started on this going to university a little bit late. Everybody was wondering what I was doing. There. So this was after your you were in the Navy. Yes. Yeah. Well, I couldn't ask my parents for money to go to college, so I had to struggle it out by myself. Okay. But anyway, I'm kind of proud to have a bachelor's degree. My first wife, Joan, and her name is Slama, still is Slama, and we keep in touch. And we have a good relationship going. 
living in California now, isn't she? Or Colorado? She's in she's in Denver. Okay. Anyway, she's a nice looking gal from Chicago. Okay. North side. These are jumping ahead of several years. This is my son Jeff and my son Jim. And uh, these were better days back then. All of us were here because my son Jeff contracted some terminal illness and he died when he was 27, I think. He died open heart surgery. Open heart surgery, okay. So he's gone. He's a good kid. And Jim was... Well, Jim was Jim. He's still, he's doing very well. He's doing extremely well. He's got several advanced degrees, and he's getting into the world of politics in, uh, with con European and Chinese connections. So I'm really proud of my kid. He's doing just great. I, I can't put the time frame exactly, but this is a different year in my life. I was working, by this time I was working for the U.S. Geological Survey as a cartographer and moved like twice a year, north in the summer and south in the winter, in the seven western states. So the best way to do that was to have a trailer, and this is a <coughs> very nice trailer, first rate trailer, beautiful coach, and uh, I just, uh, I loved it in there. I still could live there. <laughs> I really could. This is my cousin Irene Sidelko from, she is from a uh, suburb of Chicago. <coughs> she lives in Las Vegas and we get together now and then. Anyway, she's a good kid. This is me and my son Jim. And he's the one that I mentioned is doing so well. He's doing extremely well. I don't know what he's doing, but he's got several advanced degrees and something of equivalency of a PhD and what have you. That's at his wedding. Yeah, this is at his wedding. That's right. Yeah. Where was the wedding? Well, it doesn't matter. All right, who cares? No, that's it. Okay, well, anyway, that's it. Well, this is me, and uh, is that, I can't. That's Polly, Polly. Rachel, yep. and yep. Bryce. Yeah, Polly's my daughter-in-law, Jim's a wife, and the two children. The two kids are doing extremely well, and especially Rachel. She's just knocking them out in school. And I... Uh, uh, What's her name? I guess, this is hard to think of. Jim? No, her. Polly. Polly. Polly Slama. She's, uh, she, what was I going to say? She's, she's got, an she's operation nurse. Opera operating room nurse in charge of the operation. Uh, doing very well for herself. And the two kids are both doing good in school. Very good. Okay, this is in Denver, and uh, the first time I flew an airplane since I was a naval aviation cadet, which is a long, long time ago. And uh, Jim's friend owned the plane, and he took off and landed, and I flew in the, in the interim, and that was fun. I hadn't flown a plane since I was 20 years old, so as a as a uh, 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 oh, nav cad, yeah. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good trip. That was a nice. We flew a grand circle around Denver. Here's my little grandson, and uh, Bryce. Hmm. Bryce. Yeah. Oh yeah, Bryce. Yeah. Of course. And he's come a long ways. He's doing quite well now. He was went through a tough stage in his life a while back, but he's doing really good now. Very different different personality. Good kid. And that's my granddaughter. I, I can't think of Rachel. all of it. Rachel. Rachel. 
and she is doing extremely well in school and uh, I don't know what her permanent service what her plans are, but she'll, I'm sure she'll get an advanced degree one of these days. She's a nice kid and she's five foot ten and a half. <laughs> there they are, my two grandchildren. And uh, I described them before. And uh, they're riding a horse someplace. I don't know, I don't know where this is. I'm Hatton thinking, Bay. Was it Hatton Bay? Was that mm -hmm. it? Oh, okay. Well, these were before this. Here and here. Yeah. You got to keep track of Denver or all the way from Denver to Half Moon Bay. Okay, well, this is our Slama family picture here. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six Slamas in this picture. <laughs> <coughs> and where was the picture taken? It doesn't matter, but I don't know. Lakewood, Colorado. It was on Lakewood, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's their p piano over there, the fireplace. Okay. Okay, well, this is a real different one. I was dressed up for a movie role in this thing. I got into a couple of movies <laughs> and, uh, in, in the, the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. And I was dressed up, I'll think of the guy's name later. The regular actor was... He was in the speaking scenes, and they put me in other scenes, a few other scenes. And one of them was driving this jalopy jeep. Do you remember the name of the movie? Far From Home, wasn't it? Isn't it? That's uh, Drew Barrymore. Oh, that's the Drew movie? You say Far From Home, so what's he must have been in Drew Barrymore's film when she was 13. Yeah, he was. In Gerlock, in Nevada. Gerlock, Nevada, yeah. Okay, and this is a little more memorable movie role. <laughs> I was the crooked sheriff in this movie, and what was the title of this one? Love Will Travel. Well, yeah, Love Will Travel, yeah. See these together. Uh, man and his wife filmed the movie all the way from Germany to uh, Nevada. And I got to tell this one anecdotal thing. I was visiting in in uh, in in, the, in uh, Goldfield. Yeah, and I walked into the office of a shop of a, of a store that I went, I went on to talk to the lady that they owned. She was a queen bee of the town, and she looked up. She was talking to two people, two young people, that are covered with tattoos, mm -hmm. and she's and she looked up and she says, "There's your sheriff." I'm like, "What?" What? <coughs> they were trying to, they were scooping out the cast for a movie role. And I got, they gave me this role of the sheriff. And this is the sheriff's shirt and a couple other items here and that stuff like that. That was fun. That was a fun time. Mm -hmm. Tell about the incident of when you had to scratch. You scratch the crotch. <coughs> The director told me in one scene there, uh, I was walking on towards the camera, and he said, scratch your crotch. And I said, what? <coughs> and he said, scratch your crotch. And I said, you really want me to do that? And he said, yes, I do. Well, you do what the director does, or you're, or you're, 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 oh, you're gone. So I did. And that scratch, is, it's indebted in, I mean, it, it's it's for posterity, I guess. I don't know. Oh, can you tell another scene? Sure. Uh, how about on the bar when the guy's drunk and you drink? <laughs> God, I played a scrounge in it. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was I was sitting at the bar, and uh, this wasn't that all that bad. But he's and the director told me, well, steal a drink out of this guy's. The other guy was like this. And he says, Steve, just take a, take a, pick up his drag and glass and drink it. I said, okay. So. And here I was the sheriff. In the uniform. <laughs> In the uniform, Drinking. yeah. Well, that one. And that uniform, that picture right there. Well, see, I'm the crooked sheriff here. In my office, yeah, they, we, we use one of the offices in the courthouse for our thing there. And uh, I forget, I don't know what the scene is all about, but anyway, I was there.
Well, that's my wife here, as a matter of fact, isn't it? <laughs> it's when you got to see the film in San Francisco. Well, Love Will Travel. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, well, this is worth noting. Uh, they exhibited a movie in San Francisco at an off, off the main street theater, a nice theater and all that stuff. But anyway, they, <laughs> they, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to <coughs> Anyway, at the end of the movie, they took just just those little short shots of all of the main actors in that thing, and. Uh, me as the crooked sheriff stealing drinks and all this crummy stuff. I got the biggest round of applause of everybody in that movie. Uh, talk to her about S the sister act, Quickly Goldberg, and when there wasn't any film in the camera. And she had to kiss uh, the guy, the cameraman had to kiss her ring. I'm forgetting that, I don't know. Well, Whoopi Goldberg left, uh, well, maybe since he doesn't Oh, remember. she. She, she saw the movie, and scene. she's left, and she goes around she's you playing the, the slot machine. Well, she, she, turned, she turns off before. Yeah, and then <coughs> in another scene, they shoot a picture, and it's just perfect. There's no film in the camera. Hmm. And she makes the guy kiss her ring. Get down on its knee yeah, that's right. Away. Yeah, something went wrong, and they didn't have any film in the camera. <laughs> yeah, can you this is Brucey, my dandy different wife. Okay, this is Brucey's and my marriage ceremony in uh, in Goldfield, Nevada. We got married there in the courthouse, right up in the in the courthouse thing, and uh, that was a great. That was the biggest uh, episode in the whole town for years. <coughs> the biggest thing that happened there. And that was a lot of fun. That was a, that was a very nice time, wasn't it? This is the uh, county courthouse in in the Goldfield, Nevada, which you, what was at the, at back in 1907 was the biggest city in Nevada and the and the capital of the. I don't know if it's the capital. Anyway, it was a great grand courthouse, and they're s still using it to this day. And it's just a beautiful old building, just a masterpiece. The cops are back in the corner here, in the back corner. And the jail is up here, and et cetera, et cetera. And okay. you were married there. Yeah. And uh, the building was built in 1907. Yeah, and the building was it was built in 1907. We wore 1907 attire. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, well, there's our wedding picture. It's a nice shot. 1907. And that hat, that dandy hat that I had, too. The expansion of the other. I don't know, I forget who this is. Well, this is Lucy and me in the uh, courthouse, the courtroom, and uh, the the sheep, the Longhorn sheep here is, I think it's a symbol of one of the state mm -hmm. flags or something. A yeah, beautiful animal, and it was a. It, incidentally, this one was uh, was uh, I can't think of the word. It, they, somebody stole it. They, you know what I mean? They, they st stole it. They shot the sheep and stole it. And the cops caught him, so it ended up in here in the courthouse. Good. It's Brucey and me in the courthouse. At a later date, well, uh, the guy. Oh yeah, that was a later date. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's Brucey's uh, daughter and two grandchildren, grandsons. And, uh, Brucey and Billy. Okay. Bruce and Billy. Bruce and Billy, yeah. And this is taken, the picture's taken in Virginia, which, which is where they live. Me and my blue jacket. Oh, and there's Whiskey, the little cat. What a little character he was. That's not Whiskey, that's the, that's the wild cat. 
you can't approach this cat. I don't know where you want to, where you want to show it. Champagne and Merlot. Well, I'll gamble all three Both of them together. Extremely yeah. wild. Yeah, but they're wild. Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful cats. They're very, all very pretty, but they're wilder than hell. <laughs> you want to say something about whiskey? He was a little prince of a guy. This one incident lately, he was uh, strolling around and the, the other two cats got into a fight and he stepped up in between them and stopped them from fighting. Quite a little guy. And he, unfortunately he's dead and buried. But we got a little plot for reserved for him. Geological Survey, <coughs> Scroll of Honor, uh, dedicated to public service. And is this a survey? Of yeah, USG? Geological Survey, yeah, USG. 40 yes. years you had. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Oh, yeah, 40 years. Okay, I couldn't see it. What, 40 years of federal, uh, uh, federal prison time. <laughs> I mapped this place. What is this place? It's the Truck Islands. And where are they? The, no. the Southwest Pacific. In the middle of nowhere, absolutely, totally nowhere. But And this is a 1 to 24,000 scale, so a mile is... Well, it's off the thing. doesn't matter. But it's a small island. You can walk around it in, in an hour. Two hours. And uh, that was quite an ex that was quite a trip there. They they assigned me by myself, pretty much. And there was a thing I supposedly had an assistant. But anyway, I was there for six months. They said you got to be there six months, and I, I said I'll do six months. <laughs> and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I had a uh, a jeep, and I was able to drive all these roads where all the town they. Settlements are located and all that sort of thing. It's now a Japanese sanctuary, pretty much, in, um, because the Japanese were here between World War One and the end of World War Two, when we when we got it back, and uh, it was uh, truckies were happy to see us whiteies coming in there. <coughs> And that was quite an assignment. I got a real kick out of that. It was the temperature there is enough to get you down, and the heat, but but the and the steamy steamy atmosphere. But it was fun. It was it was an experience. A thousand miles from anywhere. Yeah. And you took a boat and went all around too. Oh yeah, I had to sail around. There's more up here that was, they didn't even make a map of it or put it on the map. But yeah, I say a lot clear around the whole thing. And uh, all of it. here's the airstrip. It's served by airplanes about one or two or two or three flights a, a day, a, a week, and something like that. And this is the main section of town right here. And uh, coral reef. I'm going to add something to this. Uh, there's, uh, I was down here someplace one time, and there was a, I was walking along the road, and there was a lady off off the road here a little ways, and she saw me, and she ran ran away and got hit and hid herself behind some rocks and stuff like that. I thought, what's going on? I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't threatening her. I wasn't approaching her or anything like that. And I finally, I mentioned it to one of the old times and he says, oh yeah, that's, she's, it's her, it's her period. 
uh -huh. the menstrual period at this time, and they're unclean, so they she's, they have to do this thing out and. Uh, You know, uh, we are out here, and the boat lost its motor. It was the other and way. And you were drifting it doesn't out. Matter. It was out here. Yeah. It was up here. Yeah, that was kind of nerve wracking. We we I mapped. I had rode up this. Didn't ride, but we rode the boat up here, uh, further to the outer reef, which is this is surrounded by a reef. And uh, <coughs> the uh, motor, the motor wouldn't start on the way back. Oh. We turn, we oh, I do did my job, and I said, okay, we're finished. We'll go back, and the motor wouldn't start. So that's serious. <laughs> that is serious, because nobody knew where we were. They weren't expecting me till five o'clock anyway. So that was very nerve-wracking. They they pulled on that motor for I don't know how long, ten minutes or so, and finally it started. Thank God. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have made it. You were drifting off into the drifting dark off war. into the ocean, wild ocean up, up here. And while I was there in the, in the truck area, several people disappeared. One of them was shot, and killed. And that was another story, but there was a, just a just the depth is very close. One false step, and you you could be dead around this place. There were any snakes out here, per se, but there was a lot of bugs, flying bugs. It was a <coughs> the main Japanese base in World War Two for like about twenty years between the two wars. And uh, well, what I even say about it. <coughs> okay. But anyway, that was quite an assignment. I was there for six months, and that was that was a real kick. <laughs>